Pressure is growing on Britain and the United States to pay reparations and apologize for expelling residents of the Chagos Archipelago in the Indian Ocean half a century ago, so the United States could build a major military base on the island of Diego Garcia, which is located halfway between Africa and Indonesia, and about a thousand miles south of India. The U.S. base at Diego Garcia played a key role in the U.S. invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan. For over 50 years, Chagossian people have been attempting to return home, but their efforts have been blocked by both the U.K. and the United States. Earlier this year, Human Rights Watch accused the two governments of committing crimes against humanity. In a moment, we'll be joined by a prominent Chagossian activist who's here in the United States visiting to meet with U.S. lawmakers and Biden administration officials. But first, let's turn to an excerpt of a video produced by Human Rights Watch titled The Last British Colony in Africa, How Chagossians Were Forced Off Their Homeland. In the 1960s, Britain ruled over about 18 countries and three territories in Africa. Many African states were already engaged in the process of starting to fight for their independence. Mauritius was fully engaged in this process. Britain granted independence to Mauritius in 1968, but with a major caveat, the UK would keep the Chagos archipelago for a small price. U.S. government officials in the era of decolonization were growing concerned about losing control of the world. So a group of officials in the U.S. Navy developed a plan to identify small islands around the world, and Diego Garcia became the prime island on which they wanted to build a base. Diego Garcia is one of the main islands in the Chagos archipelago, where many families had lived for generations. The secret deal began being worked out by the U.S. and British governments in the early 1960s, where the U.S. government insists to the British that we want this base, and we want it without any local population. The British government agrees to do the dirty work of getting rid of the Chagossians in exchange for a wiping away of $14 million in debt that the British government owes the U.S. government. British officials feared that if they acknowledged the permanent population of Chagos, they would have to report to the UN about the new colony they had created. What the British do in 1965 is recharacterize the entire population of the Chagos archipelago as contract laborers, not a permanent population, to create the ruse that there's no population. Between 1968 and 1973, the British government removed about 1,500 people from the Chagos archipelago to Mauritius and to the Seychelles. They were not given a choice. The only thing I saw my mother take with her was a little chest to put our clothes in it and a mattress. That's all, everything else we left there. They put all the dogs into a chamber and gassed them until they died. An excerpt from a video by Human Rights Watch titled The Last British Colony in Africa, How Chagossians Were Forced Off Their Homeland. One of the voices featured in that clip was David Vine, a professor at American University in Washington, D.C., author of Island of Shame, The Secret History of the U.S. Military on Diego Garcia. Professor Vine is also the author of Base Nation, How U.S. Military Bases Abroad Harm America and the World. He's joining us now from New York, along with Olivier Bancolt, who is the chair of the Chagos Refugees Group, the organization representing most Chagosians in exile. His recent article for Open Democracy is titled, The U.S. and U.K. Stole Our Homes. Fifty years on, we're still being denied justice. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Let's begin with Olivier Bancol. Thanks so much for being with us. Explain Morning. why you're here in the United States and, in fact, even what happened to your own family half a century ago that you're still demanding a correction for, as well as all of the Chagossians living in exile. First of all, good morning, Hemi. First of all, thank you for giving me this opportunity 
to talk on behalf of my people. The reason we are here in the United States is to find out uh, from uh, the Biden administration and apologize for what wrong had been done to the Sagotian people. I think that the, uh, the U.S. government need to change their policy uh, uh, concerning human rights for Sagotian people who had been recruited. Uh, we want uh, that the, the people of the United States understand our position. As far as our international uh, uh, human rights uh, had been banished for so many years, and we want justice to be done. We want that the U.S. who is fu uh, fully responsible for what happened to our people. Because of the peace, we had been having a, a nightmare uh, story. And uh, we want uh, them to recognize and to put an end and to apologize for all wrongs that they did. And it started by uh, uh, making some reparation for our people, like compensation and helping to resettle Sagotian on Chagos. My story, I myself, I was born on Peros Banos, one of the uh, islands of Ch Chagos Aspilago, and I was expelled in 1968. The reason because I have uh, our family have to come to Mauritius to have treatment for for my sister who had been hurt by a will card, but unfortunately after three months my sister passed away, and when my mom and dad decided to return because we have left all our belongings there in a view to return, when we asked to re uh, been asked to return, we have learned that it will be impossible for us because the island had been given to America, and it is the the wrong that we have been suffered not being. Uh, on our birthplace, being away from where we were born. And this is one of the reasons I want just to get more awareness of the situation and put their responsibility toward uh, their, their, our people. And Olivier Bancourt, uh, who have you met with in Washington among our, the leaders in the United States? And do you, do you sense any, any support for your demands in Congress? Yes, of course, we are very hopeful to say that we have been able to meet with many people, especially members of Congress, uh, Congress, uh, 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 members of Congress, and we met also with officials from uh, State Department because it's uh, uh, according to them it's the first time that that, that they hear from Sagotian what uh, uh, our demand are. The most important is con concerning our fundamental rights and our dignity as a people. If we are a people, like according to Universal Declaration of Human Rights, that everywhere, if you were born on a place, you have the right to live on the place. And we cannot accept that other people can live on our place, whereas we, we are uh, declared as person non, non grata. This is the main occasion, and we want to have the support of congressmen uh, uh, in order to find out how to present something like a letter, uh, a, a resolution, or even uh, an hearing to explain our situation and to let uh, the U.S. government shoulder their responsibility toward our Sagotian people. You talk about the uh, the history of the inhabitants of the Chagos Islands, uh, that uh, the the long term history that rebuts this contention of the U.S. and Britain that there were only contract laborers there in the '60s. Yeah, uh, both uh, of the government, U.K. and U.S., had lies. Because they all say that before the installation of the U.S. military base, they were not permanent habitat inhabitant there. It's totally untrue, because people were living for more than five generations. I give my own example. I was born there. My father, my mother, my grandfather, grandmother, even my great-grandmother were born there. And we were not, we have never been contactual workers. We were permanent inhabitants. Uh, and life for us is very wonderful, because we were living in peace and harmony. We have our culture, we have our house, we have our job, and after working hours, we used to go fishing, and we all live as one family. Suddenly, they just decided 
to choose uh, Diego Garcia because it is a very strategical point place and it is a very well situated. They decided to build a U.S. military based on Diego Garcia, but forget about the fundamental rights of our people who were living in peace and harmony. I want to play some clips of other Chagossian voices. This is Aline Louis speaking to Human Rights Watch about her life in Chagos before she was forcibly removed from her homeland. Life in Chagos for people was like living as one family. Everything we share, even the food we cook, we share. If there is a problem, there is always someone to help. And this is Eliane Baptiste uh, talking about her family story. I moved to the UK when I was 15 years old, but my parents stayed in Mauritius. In the 1960s, hundreds of Chagossians, including my mom, were forced to leave the Chagos archipelago or not allowed to return because the British and US governments wanted to make space for a US military base. That UK-US pact had a detrimental impact for those living on the islands, as well as for future generations, causing many families to be divided. The British granted British citizenship to the Chagossians and the first generations, which allowed people like my sisters and I to move to the UK. But not everyone had the chance to because there were limitations and restrictions, such as the age of the first generations and the spousal visas. My mom's siblings were not born on the Chagos Islands, so they and my cousins are not eligible for the British citizenship. It just makes me think that if, if the Chagossians were not deported if my family, my grandparents, my mom were allowed back on the islands, none of this would have happened. That's uh, Eliane Baptiste. These voices, uh, Professor David Vine, um, when you hear the pain of what was lost, first of all, I mean, explain from the beginning. Many have called this a crime against humanity. The U.S. and U.K. moving in, the U.S. building this military base, and um, aside from just bi building that military base, saying no Chagossians could live there. Good morning, a Amy and Juan. Indeed, this is a crime against, humani against humanity, a fundamentally racist crime against humanity that was masterminded from the beginning by U.S. government officials who seized upon the idea of building a base on Diego Garcia and getting rid of the Chagossians. And then they proceeded to pay the British government secretly $14 million dollars to basically do the dirty work of getting rid of the Chagossians, and then proceeded to orchestrate the expulsion over the course of several years in the late 1960s and early 1970s. And from the beginning, the U.S. government has had the power. They had the power to exile the Chagossians, and now the Biden administration has the power to finally make this right. This is a, an outrage, a, a crime against humanity indeed that should have been corrected, should never have happened, should have been corrected years ago by prior administrations. But the Biden administration now has the ability to show the world, at a time when the Biden administration is rightly criticizing other governments and their human rights records, Saudi Arabia, China, among others, at this time, the Biden administration has the ability to change U.S. policy and finally provide justice to the Chagossians by allowing them to return home, by providing compensation, by assisting with the resettlement of the Chagossians in the land of their ancestors, in their homeland, the, la the land that has been taken from them. Uh, and Professor Vine, uh, uh, sadly, the, the example of what happened with the Chagossians is not unique. Uh, 
Could you talk a little bit about this? these enormous bases that the United States has a system around the world, places like Okinawa, Vieques, Hawaii, of course, the Philippines back in the days of Subic Bay, uh, Guam, where the military basically runs roughshod over the local populations? It's true. And there are more than 20 cases in which the U.S. military has displaced local people, often indigenous people like the Chagossians, as part of the creation or expansion of U.S. military bases around the world. And that's just since the end of the 19th century. Of course, during the uh, 18th and 19th centuries, the U.S. Army in particular displaced millions of Native American peoples across the North American continent as part of the colonization and conquest of the continent. Uh, the Chagossians are not alone. Uh, but there is another case that is sadly telling. Uh, in 1946, in islands that the U.S. Navy occupied, the Ogasawara Islands, small islands that are now part of Japan, the U.S. Navy actually assisted a local population, mostly white local population of U.S. ancestry, in returning to their homes to live side by side with what was then a U.S. Navy base. They assisted in setting up schools. They assisted in setting up local government. They assisted in setting up a local economy. If, if the U.S. Navy, if the U.S. military, if the U.S. government can help a mostly white population of U.S. ancestry return to their homeland, their homes, in 1946, surely the U.S. military, the Biden administration, can do the same for the Chagossians, a population of mostly African and Indian ancestry return to their homes, their homeland, the land of their ancestors today. Uh, we just have a minute, but Olivier Bancolt, your message to people here in the United States, uh, as well as around the world. My message on behalf of my people is to find out the way. We want, as all human beings, to be able to live in peace and harmony. As I said, that is clear in the in mention in the International Universal Declaration of Human Rights, that everyone has the right to live on his, his birthplace. We want our right to be recognized. We want that we can pay tribute to all our parents who are buried in Chagos, which we did not have access to the grave. I just give you one example. We, as a Goshen, we are not allowed to go to Chagos to pay tribute to our parents buried there. Why in Point Cano, in Cannon Point, in Diego Garcia, we have a, a military dog cemetery who are well maintained. How would you consider that? My message to the world, we are not asking less or more. We are asking about our rights. And we want the Biden administration to apologize and to make reparation for what they did wrong uh, to our people. And this is our message. And we want to have more awareness, ask people to give us more support on our action. Olivia Bancolt, I want to thank you for being with us, chair of the Chagos Refugees Group, and David Vine, professor at American University, author of Island of Shame, The Secret History of the U.S. Military, on Diego Garcia.